What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. I'm Jeff with Burley Fishing and today we're talking about how to rig every single bait and lure that is included in this month's November 2021 Monster Bass bag. So we're going to dive right in. We got a collection of baits from all the regions. So again, this is all of the potential baits that you could be getting in your specific region. Some of them you won't, some of them you will, but the bottom line is we're going to rig all of them so hopefully you can walk away with maybe some tips some tricks something you can use on your local waters to go smack some biggins all that coming up right now real quick before we dive into this bag if you guys like the content be sure to subscribe to the monster bass channel there's a ton of awesome creators on here some of which i've gotten the chance to fish with they're all awesome people so you should definitely stay tuned and if you'd be so kind you can hop over to my channel burly fishing and throw me a subscribe as well hit me up in the comments let me know you popped over from a monster bass video and i'll say hey so the first thing i like to do when i get a bag is just dump all that nonsense out of there. All right, you guys, we got some really good stuff in the bag this month that should be great for fall fishing in your region. Let's start from the top with the body baits, with the hard baits first. We'll move through to terminal and then into the plastics. And what I'm gonna do is just show you maybe one or two ways that I would rig this, throw some suggestions out there. And of course, you guys feel free to hit me up in the comments below. Would you do something different? What are your favorite ways to rig these baits? All right, so off the top, we've got three potential body baits, and you might get all three, you might get two of the three, but these are the main body baits coming in this month's bag. Uh, I can tell you what my favorite is, but I'm gonna save that for a second. We've got the good old standard here, tried and true KBD 1.5 square bill. So if you guys haven't fished with a Strike King KBD 1.5, I'd be surprised. We had Tackle Junkie on our podcast, the Burley Fishing Podcast, and he had about 150 of these on the wall behind him. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good go-to bait. So this model is silent. It is a medium size, and it comes in pretty much a perfect fall color. So we've got this like green and dark blood red on the belly there. You got awesome trebles. These are good, solid trebles that are going to hold up. You've got the straight lips, so you're going to have a slightly tighter wobble. And really, that's all we're going for is the action of this bait is what's going to draw the bites. This is something that I want to be throwing in rocky sections of my river or any sort of like hard bottom situation or cover situation. So I'm going to be running it around trees, riprap, rocks, boulders, whatever I can find that this is going to just slam into because that's really where the sound comes from. When you're not using that heavy thudding rattle, you're drawing that reaction from the movement of this bait and its deflection off of cover. So this is something that I throw on my crankbait setup. Crankbait setup for me is a 7.6 Akuma Guide Select cranking rod. It is specific for cranking and the next bait I show you, well the next two, are baits that I would also use on this rod because it is a slower action. So with a slow action, that means that the rod blank bends further down the rod, right? So I have an Akuma Serrano here. This is not that rod, but we're talking simply about where does that rod flex, right? So the backbone of this rod, in particular, this is a fast action. It's gonna be way up towards the top. When you get into like a slower, moderate action, it's gonna be way down here towards the middle. And the nice thing about that with cranking especially is that you can just sort of lean into the fish. So we get our bait out there, we reel a long distance, right? Big bomb cast, reel a long distance. And then you get bit, you actually just lean into that fish Treble's gonna pierce the lip and you're gonna lose them far less often with a slower action, right? So as they're coming in, the fish can't really knock the bait loose as easily as if you were using, uh, say, a medium heavy fast action rod. So I'm not casting cranks on my jigging setup. Nothing wrong with having a good old 7.3 medium heavy that you use all your baits on. All I'm saying is as you get more specific, fishing becomes easier. You lose less fish. So highly recommend a specific cranking rod. The reel I like to use on that cranking setup is a low gear ratio, a 6-3 to 1, which allows me more control out of the diving depth of that crankbait, I feel in my opinion. And it's an SLX DC. So with that DC, we have digital control braking. So that's where you hear that like robotic zzzz 
as you cast it out. Just really cool sound, first of all, worth the price of admission. But it's easy to cast in the wind, cast baits of like lower weight to higher weight, doesn't really matter. It's just an all around easy to cast reel. Then I'll spool that up with some 20 pound or 25 pound braid as my main line and then go to something half that weight, like a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. That fluorocarbon leader is gonna help me get my crank down to a better diving depth because fluorocarbon sinks. Braid floats, mono floats. So if I'm running fluorocarbon as like a longer leader, I'm talking maybe 12 feet, it's easier to get that bait down to its true diving depth. And something like the KVD 1.5, if you can see there, dives three to five feet. Three to five feet is variant because it depends on how fast you're reeling it and what kind of line you got spooled up. So if I'm spooled up with mono, it's gonna be at the higher end of that water column versus fluoro, it's diving deeper. So there we have it again, square bill, deflect off of cover, smack this thing into whatever you can find, but my favorite way to run them hands down is dragging it across the bottom. All right, next up, I've had the chance to fish this quite a bit, but we've got the four to eight foot diving. This is like the mid range seeker eight. They come in a six and eight and a 12, I believe. This one comes in green sexy, four to eight foot. Great if you're trying to catch some suspending bass or you're finding, you know, something in the eight to 10 foot water column, we can run this across the bottom. But it's also, you know, crankbaits, you can drag across the bottom. So if you got that harder pack bottom, rocky bottom, whatever, huck this thing out there and run it right on through. You can still deflect off of cover. And you can see for a crankbait, this has this tighter front lip. So it actually has kind of a unique wobble. If you guys haven't fished a bait with a lip like that before, very unique wobble, something that I feel stands out. It's got a decent knock to it. It comes in just like a nice light colorway with a kind of a bright green header there. You can see and those big black eyes stand out. You got these nice upgraded trebles, which have sort of that sweep back right there, right? I love that. I feel it's easier to keep fish pinned with it. And again, same exact cranking setup I just discussed. So that seven, six, it's a medium heavy guide select cranking rod from Akuma and then the SLX DC in that lower gear ratio with braid to fluoro leader. That's what I'm gonna be running this on. These I feel are a lot better when you're exploring the water column. So if I'm in a slightly deeper than this diving depth, like I said, 10 feet, 12 feet, and I see some suspending bass on my sonar, right? Then I'm gonna be running this right through there and I'm probably gonna catch one. All right, this next bait I'm really excited for. I've been a fan of these arc baits. If you guys remember that topwater walking bait that just came in the box maybe a month or two ago, that is hands down one of my favorite topwaters like of all time. So I believe arc makes a good product and I'm excited to see this lipless bait. Now with lipless, I still like to run it on my cranking setup. So again, setup is exactly the same. Uh, lipless baits are, a lot easier for fish to knock off, right? So you lose a lot of fish if you're not using the right gear for a lipless bait. So highly encourage you to go get something that's like a slower to moderate action. Okay, so we have this awesome like holographic bluegill color. You got that, look at that blue hue. So you're getting a ton of flash off this. You got a good natural color with the striping and a very unique shape, right? I cannot think of another lipless I've seen that looks exactly like this. So you have this steep like hump to a sweep down section here up at the front, which is also flat. And that flat head, I've experienced this with a lot of different lipless baits, generally gives it a really good vibing action, right? So with lipless, you can fish them a million different ways. There's literally, th this is kind of a do all, anywhere in the water column type of lure, which is great when you're just trying to search. You're just running the water column, you're fan casting around a point or something and you're trying to find fish, this is great. This is a fish locator. It's got a real tinny rattle to it uh, and some decent trebles. You can see here some decent trebles on there. So, I mean, all the, the, the makings for a really good bait. And I, again, I love the natural color. So generally what I'll do with this is at first, cast it out and yo-yo it back to the boat. Also known as a ripping bait, like you can let that fall and on the fall, sometimes you'll get bit. Your line might go slack and then start moving. So it starts going down kind of like this. It hits the bottom, boom. And then from here on the yo-yo, I'm just gonna lift that rod tip up pretty quickly. It's going to, because of this flat head vibe on the way up and then rinse and repeat. Do the same thing, let it fall again, rip it up. Let it fall, rip it up. I find that's a really fun, easy way to fish this and explore that water column until you start seeing where the fish are biting at. The other way you can do it is to straight retrieve, 
So just cast it out, reel it back in, and you can do the countdown method. So you just count down in your head, one, two, three, and generally that's gonna be like one, two, three feet in the water column, and then you slowly retrieve that around that depth, right? So you can run it high, you can burn it, you can slow down and kind of run it close to the bottom, and these don't get hung up too much in grass because you don't have the lip. If you hit grass, generally you can just rip it right through, hence ripping bait. So run around cover, explore the water column with this thing. I think it's a great natural color for fall. For me personally, I don't know about you guys, let me know in the comments, but natural colors, especially bluegill and perch patterns, have been just smashing it around me. So, I mean, I think it's gonna do work. All right, so hands down, my second favorite fall bait is a spinner bait. My first is a chatter bait. Pretty much all fall has been producing. These things are awesome. Both of these coming in some of my favorite colors, white chartreuse, and then we got mostly chartreuse with a hint of white and a painted blade with a red eye on there, so that's cool. So we got the, the Strike King Red Eye Special Spinner Bait. So that one comes in a 3 8 ounce, and then we got the Rick Clun Trickster, wow. This one has some fancy looking blades. That is something totally different. Also, she's heavy. That's a three quarter ouncer right there. Cool thing about like heavier spinner baits though, and I learned this from Steve Parks, the guy who invented Rage Tail and many other lures that you uh, might be familiar with, who also works with Strike King, is that you take like a three quarter ounce, you can maybe get away with a half ounce in some place, but with the wind, uh, kind of the way it is in fall where I'm at, Typically, I'm gonna go heavier, three quarter ounce to an ounce, and you cast this thing out there or flip it up in a cover, a spinner bait, flip it up in a cover, let it hit the bottom, and then slow roll it across the bottom, and you'll get bit. And I've used that technique, and it has worked. So, I mean, I'll take it from a legend. Steve Parks knows what he's talking about. Well, let's start with the Rick Clun. This one I'm really intrigued about. I cannot wait to get this out on the water and fish it because this is totally different than any spinner bait I've thrown. Check it out. So we've got like that bullet style head, should get through cover, no problem. But then we have the double bend. Look at that. That's interesting. Usually you get just a straight wire on a spinnerbait. This one, they went with an extra bend, which keeps those blades more tightly together. They don't have a lot of area to move. You got one silver, one gold, that's cool. So these blades are gonna have a very unique action because of their unique shape. This is just really different from any other blade you're gonna see. I do like that it kind of curves back there as well. So you got it kind of like scooped out or concave here on the back side of that blade. Again, interested to see how this one works for me. Um, you've also got sort of a hand tied skirt here. You got that wire tie on the skirt. So that should hold up pretty well. Good color, solid option for right now. The Strike King is also a great option. Let's check this one out. Okay, so this is more of my go-to style. It's 3 eighths of an ounce. Uh, you are banded skirt instead of hand tied, that's fine. Uh, and then you've got the red eye special, that's that right there. A willow blade that is painted to look like a bait fish with a red eye, which could be something that your bass key in on, which is good. And then the other blade is a smaller Colorado blade. So we've got silver and painted. Sometimes that makes a difference. We've talked about this on our podcast before, but spinner baits will get bit year round. Generally speaking, you just have to change your retrieve or maybe change your color or your trailer or something. They're gonna get bit. So if you're not getting bit on a spinner bait, vary it up, try something different. Burn it or slow it down. Flip it into cover and slow roll it out like Steve Parks would say. Uh, change your trailer, let it run deeper. Switch from a paddle tail to a fluke of some sort. That helps you run a little bit further down. And maybe just change the color. So if chartreuse and white doesn't work, which almost always works for me up here. Change it up, go darker, go natural, go light, whatever. Change the color of the blades. Generally speaking, you're gonna go low light conditions, gold, bright lights, silver, but sometimes you vary it up. Sometimes you go with a painted blade. I like having different options like that. If you guys aren't stocking up on these, you definitely should. As far as the setup goes, as far as the setup for these, I'm throwing it on one of my newer combos, which is a Luz Custom Speed Stick. It's a 611 medium heavy that is kind of perfect for spinnerbait conditions. It's fast action, but pretty whippy, so it's really easy to cast it long distances 
and then also to set the hook on those fish. So I'm not losing any fish on spinnerbaits, haven't yet on this one. And then as far as the reel goes, I paired that up with a Tournament MP from Luz, which I love. It's very smooth reel, and I've got it set up right now with 20 pound braid going to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. It's pretty much my go-to for like moving baits, body baits, things like that. It lets me get it down in the water column where I want it. And of course, where I'm typically running these, other than like the Steve Parks method, flip it out there, slow roll it back, is along weed lines. So find those weed lines, those drop-offs, those edges, and just bang these out there and run them back. And if they don't bite, speed up or slow down your retrieve. Try something different. All right, we got a ton of plastics. You guys are probably getting, you know, two to four of these bags in your region. It could be any of these. So we're just gonna go through some of the basics for setting these up. We'll start with the big stuff. So with any of these, I'm gonna be throwing these on one of my like 7.3 medium heavy to heavy setups. We've got a series of three potential like bug or beaver style baits here. I'm gonna be flipping these most of the time. Maybe Tokyo rig. So this could be on a heavier setup. Then we got the gosh dang bull worm from Strike King. It's the KVD Perfect Plastics. It is a 10 inch worm. Y'all down in Texas, y'all down south, you guys get this? I don't get this. So I'm just gonna tell you what I think I would do with it. Wow. First of all, there you go. Fantastic Instagram pic. Go ahead and just lay this out on your arm. Take a picture. You're guaranteed a thousand likes. So we have a pretty gosh dang thick worm. As far as the color for this, we got black and blue swirl. So it's like that darker color with some highlights of blue in there, which is pretty sweet. This is not something I would ever throw in Michigan. Not ever. But this is something you guys definitely should throw down south. And I mean, if you guys want, you can look up some videos of KVD knocking them dead on this or on the eight inch version. Here's the deal. What I would do with this is potentially Texas rig it. I actually have like these decent, I don't remember where I got these, but just like longer, larger, I think more appropriate for something like this, uh, screw lock hooks, right? So you can just throw a, a screw lock hook on there. You just spin that screw lock right in there, thread the hook on, and then we can throw a weight ahead of that. So I think that's a solid option. If you can get like a five aught Tokyo rig, uh, we just dropped our own from Monster Bass, so the Sabertooth Tokyo is a good option as well. Gonna wanna go with a heavier gauge hook though, like the four, the five out is, four is kind of a minimum. And then we'll just Texas rig this on here and you can run it that way. Bullworm is supposed to kind of float and have some pretty crazy action underwater, so we should be good there. And then my last option would be something like a shaky head. Shaky head is uh, a pretty solid go-to, I'd say up here. You know, another option that we do have with something like a bullworm as huge as it is already, it's a 10 inch, is I can cut it down. Like you're never stuck with whatever that plastic started out as, right? So I can go ahead and take this, I can trim a couple inches off of it and maybe make it a little more appropriate for the type of water I fish. But what I might end up doing is go ahead and throw this on a shaky head. This way it stands up on the bottom pretty good. If I'm hopping it, every time it's falling, like this is gonna give me more of this vertical action and should draw a bite. Now, again, if I'm feeling just pulls, right? I'm not getting bites. I'm not getting a hookup and I'm going to trim the heck out of this. I might even cut it like right here. And I would fish this section for sure, because with this, you get this nice open pocket on the tail. So that is going to help catch water, catch an air bubble and just float a little bit more. So I like it. Personally, I, I'd say like the Tokyo, probably my go-to. And again, on something like this, maybe a heavy stick, right? So like a 7.3 heavy, something I'd be you know using for flipping, jigging. Real-wise, it's up to you, your go-to. I like something with maybe a little more power, so like an Abu Garcia Revo SX would be like a good option, uh, or a, an Akuma Komodo SS, also a great option. Something that I can just like winch them out of there. I always love that these come with two holes here, because it's just big enough, you have to hang it on your wall that way. <laughs> Ridiculous. Speaking of rigging options, I just remembered that we had these in here. So this is the new Monster Bass Sabertooth EWG. These come in a three aught, way too small for that bullworm in my opinion, but a really solid all around hook. Three aught is a good go-to size for hooks and EWGs, you can't go wrong. So let's rig up some other stuff with this. So next up we had our three bug style baits. You're getting one of these most likely in your bag this month. So with three different plastics, I'll show you three ways that I like to fish these style of baits. So first off, we got the Thunderhawk Camel Craw. This comes in a pretty cool smoke color. Check it out. And it's got just 
really nice action to it. Uh, little appendages coming off the side. And then you have like the nice flapping claw there. So that's gonna catch water and move pretty well. I love fishing this style of baits on a Tokyo rig. So I'll take, you know, the new Monster Bass Sabertooth Tokyo, throw like quarter ounce up to a half an ounce uh, as far as like the, the weight on there. And then you just Texas rig this bad boy. She'll sit nice and straight just like that. So nice thing about Tokyo, here's your line tie right here is that this helps you sit right off the bottom. So in the fall, as vegetation dies down, this is a pretty good option. Throw this around there, but I also like to just kind of drift this through rivers, let it knock around cover a little bit. It's weedless, and as long as you bend this wire down here, maybe even break off the tip if you have to, uh, sometimes they're a little bit longer than this, then you're gonna get sort of this knocking sound from the weight as you hop this thing up off the bottom and you're not gonna get snagged nearly as much as you think. Solid option, 10 out of 10, we'll catch fish. Next up, one of my favorites, the Adrenaline Bug here from X Zone, and this is a super cool color. I have not gotten any of their plastics in this color before. Uh, this is Purple Shadow, oh my gosh. Cool freaking name too, check that out. So it's a longer bodied bug, right? Much longer. And then we got some big old honking claws here down at the bottom with the flaps. So they're going to move a lot, but look at this purple hue and purple flake. That's gosh dang ridiculous. So something like this, I'm going to want to throw on a flipping hook. This would be like my second favorite way to rig these style of baits. So if you guys are familiar with flipping hooks, you're going to tie a snail knot right here above the plastic bait keepers. And then you're going to thread this on. So you rig it the same way you would in EWG where you Texas rig it, right? You push it up all the way up over your snell knot there, turn the bait, and this is a, a two-tone bait. So you have a bright side and a not so bright side. It's up to you. I typically go bright side down. Once we get to this point, instead of tech exposing this, we're not gonna push the hook point all the way through. We're gonna roll the bait up a little bit and then we're just gonna bury the hook point in the plastic. That's gonna allow us to rig it a bit straighter be completely weedless right there, right? We're not getting snagged up. But if we get bit, it's gonna punch through the plastic and you're gonna get yo fish. I like this a lot. I think that it's great to flip into heavier cover. I'll typically throw anywhere from say like a quarter ounce tungsten flipping weight. There's a difference, not just your standard weight, it's a flipping weight, a little more rounded. And I might peg that if I'm going through grass or something, but I kind of like to leave it unpegged and just let this thing fall a little bit more because that's typically when I get my bites. Okay, last bug lure we got to go through is the Deep Creek Lures. This one is called the Super Razor Beetle. You get five of them. It's black and blue flake color. This one, I'll just go standard Texas rig. So we already did a flipping hook. We did a Tokyo rig. The other go-to standard for me would be Texas. So this Razor Beetle is crazy. It's got tons of action here. It's a little bit longer. It's actually got like this sort of indented middle section here for rigging purposes and to prevent you from getting snagged. So we're just gonna take our Monster Bass Sabertooth EWG and we're gonna Texas rig it. So we punch through the top, come down like quarter inch or less, slide this bait all the way up, turn it around so it lays against the hook there. And then I like to just flip it over and roll it. So we roll this bait up, punch our hook all the way through and then you've got your hook kind of exposed there. So we're just gonna tech expose that, pull the bait up a little bit, and then just shove that hook point in. There we go, sits nice and flat. Throw your weight up there, peg it if you're going through grass, leave it unpegged if you're dealing with rocks, just let it fall, the weight will fall first, and then this will come slowly afterwards. The only other thing I might do with this is Carolina rig it. Go with your preference, rig up your own Carolina rig. You just need a weight and beads and some swivels, or you can get a pre-rigged. Carolina rig, which is easier. Tie that on and then tie a leader. Um, recently we fished the St. Lawrence River with the Monster Bass team and the go-to setup that caught me the most fish was a Carolina rig with a three foot monofilament leader. So that was letting this bait float behind a lot and I was just kind of like dragging it through current and that's when I was getting smacked. So I thought that was huge. Throwing something like this on there could be really helpful, especially if you're in dirtier water with this black blue. All right, next up, we got the Big Bite Baits Warmout 3.5 inch in Watermelon Red Ghost. These are pretty cool baits. You can use them as a trailer on a spinner bait. Uh, you could throw them on a chatter bait, any sort of moving bait like that. But personally, I like to run them weightless 
across the top. So this is a top water bait to me. It floats pretty well. It's got these crazy dangling feet. And all I gotta do is take my Monster Bass Sabertooth EWG and I'm gonna thread it through this side. So we're gonna punch that through. Try not to hit that eye. These eyes are plastic, they do fall off. So I'm rigging it, hook coming out right below that eye there. Thread my bait up turn it on sideways and then lay it against that hook. And then same thing as we did uh, with our Deep Creek Lures bait. We're just gonna push that hook through and then we're going to expose the hook point. Boom. And I'm just gonna run it just like this across the top weightless. It's got enough heft to it that you can just huck it out there pretty well. And then something like this one is rigged weedless top water. I'm throwing this into the dirtiest cover I can find. But as you can see also, it has like this little hook section down here. So you can rig it on any of your swim bait hooks. We'll get to those here in a second with another plastic we're gonna throw. This is just my personal favorite way to do. Very finessey top water plastic. If you guys haven't thrown top water plastics like this, they get bit. They're awesome. They're fun to fish. So definitely check this out. By the way, on that Warmouth, my go-to rig is a Ducket Silverado. It's a 7.3. It's medium heavy, but I feel like it has a little bit more whip. So it's a fast action, but I think it's a good topwater rod because I feel like whether I'm running hard topwater baits like the Mad Max Popper or that Arc uh, topwater, I don't lose fish very often because I can play them pretty well with the flexibility of that rod. And as far as the reel goes, I've got that rigged up to an SLX not a DC, just a regular SLX, but it's an eight three to one. So it's a high gear ratio, which allows me to have better control over top water. It's a go-to buzz bait rig. Um, love using that for like whopper ploppers, things like that. It does a really good job. All right, let's talk swimming baits. Swim baits are great in the fall. Um, this one right here is particularly interesting. This is a smart baits paddle tail. Now these do change color. They actually turn a little more chartreuse in warmer water conditions and colder it'll get a little bit darker so it stays more of like this natural color but to start out not a bad color at all with that red and green with the black and red flake in it looks like a little bit of copper flake in there too a little gold that is a juicy looking paddle tail so my go-to way to rig something like this right now this time of year is actually with an underspin so we've already discussed spinner baits chatter baits they work really well these bladed baits right now so I love throwing on something like the VMC. Trocar makes a really good one as well. And it's a screw lock, so you just spin that sucker on there. Nice thing about these smart baits is that they've got a real big head section, so it's pretty easy to rig this up. You wanna have this flat side be the top, and then you've got a little rigging section down here below. We're gonna rig this weedless, so we're just gonna punch our hook all the way through. So it sits out on top there, and then we'll bury the hook point right back in. There you go. So you've got a weedless presentation with a little bit of flash, and I find that that just gets bit. And again, with this color changing bait, it should uh, adjust, the color should adjust to, and again, with these smart baits, they change a, a color a little bit in the water, so I think it should pop. It should stand out pretty gosh dang well. Throwing this on the exact same setup as I throw my spinner baits and chatter baits. All right, guys, last two baits. Let's get finesse -y. We have one of my favorite baits of all time, the Z-Man TRD Finesse Craw. And we've got another favorite bait of all time, actually, the KVD Perfect Plastics Fat Baby Finesse. So that Z-Man Finesse TRD Craw is in green pumpkin, solid color anywhere you fish. And then we're just gonna take our Monster Bass Sabretooth EWG Ned, and we're gonna Texas rig that baby. Uh, it does have a top side and a back side. You just thread that hook through the back side, push it up to the jig head, spin that baby around so it sits on the hook, and then same exact thing that we've been doing this entire episode. Thread that hook through, bury the hook point. There you go, weedless Ned. It's gonna sit like this on the bottom. Z-Man's Elastec extra floaty. So that's just gonna have these claws dancing like crazy, looking like a craw in a defensive position. Smallmouth love these. Absolutely, we'll come up and munch on these. It's a fantastic bait to throw around. And Green Pumpkin paired with that sort of watermelon head that we offer with the Sabretooth EWGs. That's that green and red. Dude, you can't go wrong. This is one of my favorite things to throw. My finesse combo for that is a spinning outfit. It is the Akuma Saros in a seven foot medium light fast action. Fast action is really good for Ned rigging. Reel is not as big a deal. Currently I'm using the Helios SX reel for my spinning setup and I love that thing. I love it a lot. 
As for this fat baby finesse, this comes in a juicy fire tiger color. These worms are pretty durable, got some good play to it. You've got the, I mean, the reason it's called a fat baby finesse is it's a shorter finesse trick worm with this fat tail section and it's flat on the bottom. So I love these for shaky heads. This is like a go-to shaky head size. So my go-to setup for that is gonna be rigging this baby up on my Super K Jigs shaky head. This is a ball head there, it gets through cover really well. So that's a great option. And then of course you can take your saber tooth hook and you can Texas rig this, another good option. Might even throw something like this weightless. Okay, if you wanna finesse, weightless is a good approach. Lighter weights is a good approach. You can throw this on a Tokyo rig. You can throw it on anything. So any of the setups that we talked about today. Something like this, I might throw on a spinning outfit as well. Typically my go-to rig for a shaky head is gonna be, uh, again, a spinning outfit, but it's a medium. It is my Ducket Silverado. And again, real not as important, but I'll pair it up with like a Shimano Sahara or something like that, right? Gets the job done. Dude, I like this color, that's a great color. All right, you guys, that was a lot of baits. Uh, so hopefully this video was helpful for you. We walked through a ton of different ways to rig these. We talked rods and reels and combos and line and you know leader line and all that fun stuff. Now, the trick is, to go rig it up and go fish it, right? So hopefully you get your bag here very soon and you're able to get out on your local body of water and just go absolutely knock them dead. I wish you the best of luck. Again, if you like content like this, be sure to subscribe to the Monster Bass channel. You can come check out my channel, Burly Fishing, and throw me a subscribe. I would appreciate that very much. And again, I hope you have a great day and I hope you go catch some fish. Get after them.